Hello, my name is Daniel Rowe. I'm one of the team working on building Nuxt, and I'm here today to talk about how Veet makes Nuxt possible. It is a real pleasure to be looking around and seeing so many interesting speakers representing many different frameworks and to be here as part of a growing body of people using Veet to build amazing things. So it feels like a family uh, in lots of ways. And uh, I, I love learning from, from everyone else uh, and thought it would be helpful to share maybe a little bit about how we are using Veet uh, in Nuxt. First, uh, just a, a quick word about my, myself. My, my background is uh, that immediately before I was uh, part of the team uh, working on, on Nuxt itself, I was uh, heading up a small software as a service company, building uh, our product with Nuxt. And really, from my perspective, that's, uh, that's very much where I am. I'm a user of Nuxt, someone who uh, values all the uh, things that it has to offer uh, because I've, I've, I've used them. And, uh, and so what I'm really excited about and maybe most excited about thinking about what Veet makes possible is it makes possible a lot of amazing things uh, from a user point of view, not least its speed. Uh, and a, a few more, of course, that we'll get a chance to talk about uh, today. If you haven't come across Nuxt, then uh, maybe it's worth a brief introduction. Nuxt is a progressive, full-stack framework for building web applications. And what I mean by saying that it's a progressive framework is that it comes with a lot of things out of the box. So you, sh you really don't need to know uh, a lot about how uh, things work under the hood to get going. Everything should work well. They should have uh, best practice built in. It should be performant should enable all kinds of things that you might want to do, from generating static uh, sites to uh, sites without any JavaScript at all, to uh, doing SSR, to having great SEO uh, interaction, to enabling deployment to serverless functions or node servers or GitHub pages. Or um, it, it, The point is, Nuxt is designed to make a lot of things really simple out of the box and as easy as possible. So you don't need to configure uh, anything, uh, no matter how uh, complex it might be to do that uh, normally. But the idea of it being a progressive framework is that things very much are within your control to configure. So you can actually take uh, as much control of Nuxt as you would like. And that's something that's been true from the early days of Nuxt. Um, there's uh, been a, a hooks mechanism and a way for uh, users not just to configure it within their own project, but actually to publish packages, modules that enable other people to benefit from that um, as well. If you want to uh, check it out, do go to modules.nuxjs.org. You'll see some of the many modules that have been built by lots of contributors uh, over the years. Um, the modules ecosystem is a great, great, wonderful thing that I'm constantly uh, really glad exists. Um, you can see ways of integrating Nuxt with CMSs, deployment targets, languages, um, component libraries, whatever uh, you might uh, imagine. Um, so Nuxt is, is a, a progressive framework. It um, has lots of great things uh, to start with, and it can be extended hugely. Um, and we're powered by uh, Veet. Uh, Webpack's also an option, I, I should say, in, in Nuxt 3, but it's Veet by default, uh, and for good reason. One of the uh, key things, I want to highlight uh, two particularly. Um, one of the, the key things is that Veet enables rapid development for us. So with Nux3, we've been working really hard over the last couple of years to roll out a, a framework that is uh, fit for the future. Uh, and there are lots of new features even as we've been building uh, even just in the last uh, weeks or, or months that we want to add to the framework, we want to make it better. And that's never going to change, right? Uh, we always want web development to be pushing forward. And Veet is a fantastic thing from a development point of view as a maintainer because it enables us to build quickly. Um, and, and that is in no small measure due to uh, Rollup, on which uh, Veet is uh, it's based in, in um, which is, forms the core of, of how Veet transforms um, the code that you write into the code that's actually compiled and, and runs in the browser or in the server. And I think the, the, the way that Veet and Rollup handle that code and, and the whole transformation process um, is really one of the reasons it's so easy to write code and make, it, uh, make, make um, new features uh, 
on a quick and um, somewhat rapid uh, basis. Um, we have uh, 11 built-in Vite plugins. I counted just the other day within the Nux code base. Now, that's really very much uh, how we how we work in terms of building new features. Um, and any Vite plugin can be extracted, of course, into a, a Nux module um, and bundled up with other features as well, which means that it's really easy for people who want to try something new or add a new feature to Nux uh, to create a module to enable that functionality. It has all the same kind of um, abilities that a built-in um, Nuxt uh, Vite plugin or, or module would have, uh, which means that we can actually test things out, test them in, in uh, one project or, or many, before actually then wrapping them into Nuxt core itself. That, that kind of thing is a, a huge, a huge thing. It means that um, anyone can try, anyone can add features to Nuxt and, uh, and do so quite quickly. Um, and one of the things that's actually come out of that, and I, I know it's uh, it's not used by um, I said Nuxt alone, which is which is wonderful, um, but the unplugin in the UnJS uh, ecosystem, unplugin enables you to write code in the format pretty much of a rollup or a Vite uh, plugin, uh, but which is then usable in Webpack or in ES builds. Um, and obviously roll up and Vite as well. And that's a really, really interesting thing to be able to do because you no longer have to focus so much on um, integrating tightly with a particular bundler, but you can actually just adopt the, the format that uh, Vite uses for plugins and, uh, and benefit from it. Um, do, do check out Unplugin and, uh, and, and consider writing your own. I wanted to show you just um, briefly today what it might look like uh, to create a plugin and extract it into a Nuxt module um, if you were building a new uh, new plugin or library with Nuxt. So starting here just with a, a really, really basic site because that's not particularly what I want to show you, but um, we can actually just add a Vite plugin inline in uh, Nuxt config, um, just as you could with a normal Vite config, just a awesome Vite plugin. It's uh, not much of a name, but... Uh, and all we're going to do really is is do a, a very simple um, replacement of of some code. Um, where we can just uh, change welcome to Nuxt to um, Nuxt is is awesome. Um, and uh, and and that's going to to pretty much um, run, and that's going to change the code in in our app dot view. Um, obviously, you would want to be doing lots lots <laughs> would be doing lots more interesting interesting stuff. Um, but uh, but but that that simple Vite plugin we can now extract using Unplugin uh, into something that could run anywhere. So it could run in your your Webpack uh, instance as well, or you could distribute it to run uh, in uh, say uh, some other framework or, or library using a, a different different build tool. Um, so we can just copy that out. And uh, hey presto, we have a, an Unplugin um, that uh, that can just be instantiated by calling the Vite method on it. And there we go. We have something that uh, uh, just refresh the page, and there we go. It's all working beautifully. Um, but one step further. Now um, we might want to extract that into a Nux module. Um, we've got the uh, config to do that. Um, we've got a utility called define Nux module that takes care of uh, providing typings and things like that. Um, so we can uh, simply create a Nux module. Uh, give it a setup function. That's where these kind of things normally uh, work. Uh, and what we want to do, all we really want to do is, is add a Vite plugin. So uh, we've got one and yep, that module would do it. So now we can actually then just drop out the Vite uh, plugin config, stick our module in uh, and there we go. Um, now we can move that into a separate file um, preparatory to say uh, publishing it. And we can uh, just Copy, copy all of that um, into the uh, the plugin file. Um, make it a default export. And oh, what's the ah? We have a double duplicate export. I'll just get rid of that. Uh, and okay, and there we have it. That's the next module built um, using Vite to inject a plugin to do a code transformation. Um, and that means then that all uh, you or someone else um, would have to do is just point uh, to that particular uh, plugin, my Vite plugin, and, uh, and there you go. You could even deploy that to NPM and it would probably work, but 
you might want to have a, a build step as well. Um, there you go. Uh, that's that's how simple it is um, to iterate over a Vite plugin um, and actually create a Nux module off the back of it. Um, do <laughs> give it a try. I think it's uh, it's well worth um, well worth doing that. Um, it it means that it's possible both um, for us within the Nux team and anyone who is actually um, using Nux and wants to share something they've built to do so really uh, quickly. Um, uh, and and Vite, Vite of course uh, enables that. The second thing I, I really want to uh, draw to your attention just in terms of how Vite makes Nux possible is actually what it enables in terms of developer experience. And uh, obviously the, the, the thing I've not even mentioned is how fast Vite is. Um, the, the, the philosophy of how Vite works, it's, uh, it's obviously pretty incredible. Um, and that will be familiar, I think, probably to all of us using Vite, uh, no matter where we've used it in uh, whatever framework we've used it in. Um, it's the kind of thing that, that you never get tired of, right? Uh, making a change in your code and switching over to see it in the browser um, and not even seeing the flicker uh, because it's already happened uh, in the time it's taken you to actually switch contexts. Um, but, but here are just a couple of, um, of things that we do. So we auto import uh, utilities. So when in any Nux project, there will be uh, lots and lots of um, code uh, functions that you want to use, things like in a view project, things like ref or on mounted, uh, so view composables like that. There might also be in a Nux project server side composables. So you might want to access a, a request um, object or, or, or set a header or set a cookie or something like that. Uh, and all of these different kinds of utilities are all available to be used throughout your application, no matter if you import them directly. Uh, and you can also uh, create your own uh, just by creating a composables directory in your project. And all of those then are injected into your code. The imports are injected into your code exactly where you use them. So you still get the benefit of um, bundling them all up and uh, tree shaking out those that aren't used. Um, and all of that is powered by a, uh, a Beat unplugin, uh, which uh, looks at your usage, makes the transform where required. And again, because it's Vite, we're not having to run that on your entire code base. So obviously it's only the code that you, you need to display the, the page in your browser that uh, ends up getting transformed. Uh, and that is, a, that is a lovely, lovely thing to, to experience as a developer. I still really struggle when I'm uh, reproducing um, or trying to reproduce a bug, a bug say with a, a pure uh, view installation and having to um, manually import everything suddenly feels like a huge burden, uh, even though I guess that's probably how oh, I'd previously done it for years. Uh, and it's not just auto imports of components, but also auto imports uh, of, of components uh, throughout your app. So you can create uh, view components. Um, libraries you use, modules might add them as well. Uh, and then all you need to do to actually use that in your app is just use it in your, your view template. You'll get um, type hinting uh, through uh, Volar or whatever IDE plugin you use. Uh, and again, in the actual code, it will be automatically um, imported in that component, either as a lazy import, if you use the lazy syntax, um, or directly as a, as a straight import in, in most cases. Uh, and again, with all the same benefits of bundle splitting and tree shaking. Well, I thought it might be helpful to do a little case study of three in particular things that we do uh, to improve developer experience with Vite. Um, so the first is uh, auto-keyed composables. So one of the things with Nux is that it is not just a client-side uh, framework. So there is a server, uh, there is a server bundle, and we can do things on the server. Uh, we can make uh, fetch requests, we can get data, we can cache that data. Um, and we ideally want to do that only once. We, we don't want to run it on the server, a network request, in order to render some initial HTML, and then for some reason have to, to run that again on the client side. We actually want to track what we've, what, we've, what we've done, what state we've set on the server, and make sure that on the server side it's the same. So in Nuxt, you can, of course, uh, define your own keys, uh, and uh, so we can match up server and client state. Um, but if you had something like this, you just want to have some access to uh, an SSR safe uh, data value, like uh, we enable, um, we make possible in Nux with use state. 
Uh, you probably don't want to have to set the key every single time you, you use that composable throughout all of your components. And so what we, we do is we have a Vite plugin that is able to inject a magic key, uh, a key based on the file name uh, and then the position within the file of this composable. Um, and that's going to be the same between client and server, which means we can, uh, we, we can if you don't provide a key of your own, we can use that key um, and ensure it's then matched up. So the rendered HTML has something like this. It has a, a window Nuxt object, uh, and then there's this, this magic key that's been inserted and has, has the value. So on, uh, on, on, obviously this is a slightly contrived example, uh, no need to, to use use state for, for something as simple as this, but it means that you're able to um, take some data from server, pass it through to client side and match up the value between those two builds with that key. It's something that often people are requesting some kind of unique uh, identifier um, that is shared between builds. So you can identify um, it within a component. Um, and that's what we're able to use Vite uh, to do. You can also do it, maybe a um, more useful example would be to, to do some kind of data fetching request. Uh, and that's probably where it's most used. Um, so if you were running use async data, um, that's again, how your data gets from your server to your client side. Uh, the Vite plugin provides a key. That key is then embedded in the HTML and retrieved by the client side uh, Vite uh, bundle. Uh, and that's how we're able to get the data from, from server to client. Here's another example, uh, and one that I'm particularly interested in. It's, uh, it's really um, under active development at the moment. But uh, one of the things that Nux has always had in, in Nux 2 has been uh, the inlining of, of uh, used CSS. So when you actually um, write a component and you have your style block with some CSS, that can be embedded in the HTML of the page, meaning that you don't have any kind of layout shift. It's the browser already knows everything it needs to know in order to render that component. And that's something we really wanted to make sure would be possible with Nux 3 as well. Um, so this is uh, an example of a component you might have. Uh, a view single file component has a, uh, some kind of, of style information associated with it, whether that's through, uh, through Tailwind or Windy or Uno or just inline in the SFC. Um, and what we're able to do in the Vite build is harness uh, Vite and Rollup to emit um, a separate chunk containing only the styles, only the actual CSS used by these different components. Now, so in this particular case, it looks a little bit like this. We have um, a list of components of file names um, and then the associated uh, dynamic imports to pull in the CSS like just as a string. That means that when we render the HTML on the server side, we're able to detect what components are used in the rendering. So uh, we, we, we know all of their IDs anyway as part of the, the view SSR um, integration. And we're able to match those up to the CSS that they emit. So we can actually produce something like this. The, the global style sheet is still at the moment required for um, subsequent navigation on client side. We don't um, add the CSS to the JavaScript bundle. That would seem counterproductive. Um, so we just prefetch it. Uh, and then all you need in order to render the actual page that we're um, pulling down at that moment in time is uh, inlined in the page. Um, and in our preliminary testing, we've seen huge performance improvements in terms particularly of uh, layout shift. Um, and, uh, but it's, as I said, a feature under active development, uh, one that wouldn't have been possible um, without the ability of Vite to uh, allow us to, to um, take a position inside the build pipeline. Uh, and another one as well that's been really, uh, really helpful for us and is an interesting um, case study as well. Um, we originally built this within Nuxt itself. So we, we created the plugins to do this, um, uh, but subsequently we worked quite closely with uh, the Vite team uh, and they've actually adopted um, this, uh, even a, a more powerful version of, of this into to Vite itself. Um, the idea was with Nuxt, we want to be able to build once and deploy anywhere. So you should be able to build a version of your Nuxt server and then change the URL where it's hosted or change the, the base URL of it, um, or change a CDN URL where the assets are located. So you, you should be able to, to configure all of this at runtime. You shouldn't need to 
run a rebuild in order simply to change the location where your assets, your JavaScript, um, your CSS, your uh, images are, are located. It should be configurable at runtime, I think. Um, and Veet has enabled this uh, amazing uh, experimental feature, which hopefully soon will be um, brought into, uh, into stable, which enables us to render built URLs. So we're able to take something like a JavaScript a chunk name or uh, an asset path um, that might be within CSS, it might be uh, within the uh, JavaScript bundle, um, and actually we can, we can render that in different kinds of ways. So in particular, this would be how you would uh, use a global function um, to render the JavaScript chunks uh, for, uh, for the app. And this is actually something very close to what we use in Nuxt in order to ensure that no matter where you deploy your app, um, we are able to use a runtime value to determine whether those uh, JavaScript chunks come from. Um, so we can do something like this. Uh, we can set an environment variable on the command line, or in a serverless function, you might have a different way of doing that. Uh, run it, um, and that uh, CDN URL then can be passed through in the rendered HTML to the client side JavaScript. Obviously, you don't have to recompile it or change it in any way. It doesn't have to be modified, but it's able to pick up on that uh, value, that config app CDN URL, um, and render and run JavaScript from that base, uh, from that point onward, uh, and do the same for um, images and fonts and anything else that you might have. Uh, obviously, that's, that's pretty exciting, um, and I think um, it's the kind of thing that you would want or expect from a server-side rendered app that you might run on in any location. Um, there are, of course, uh, challenges as well. And I thought I'd mention just very, very briefly two of them. Um, Nuxt is a, an SSR framework, um, which means we want to run the application within the node environment where we are, in fact, rendering HTML initially. And we also want to be able to run the application in the browser, and we want to be able to hydrate the app uh, in the browser. Now, in, in production, this is, this is, this is great. Um, it works pretty simply. But in development, we want, as you are making changes to your app, uh, ideally, those are uh, immediately refl reflected in the HTML that is served up from the server. Uh, and we don't want to have to compile the entire application in order to build it, uh, in, in order to set, ret return a single request, because that could be, uh, take, take a huge amount of time. So we have actually two Vite builds within Nux. There's the server build, uh, there's the client build. Um, and they're also, therefore, to the servers, uh, if you will. Um, there's the one that matches the, the client side, uh, um, JavaScript, and, and the one on the server side. We've been able to um, harness Vite for that uh, as well, uh, using um, a really uh, an amazing program called uh, Vite Node by uh, Anthony Fu, who also created Unplugin, it's worth saying. Uh, and, uh, and this means we're able to do are all the same kinds of things you'd want to do with Vite. So only compiling the code that's uh, changed or used um, on the server side uh, as well. Um, so anyway, watch this space. I, I, I think there's going to be a really interesting article coming out from Anthony soon talking a little bit about how some of these, these challenges can be tackled uh, in Vite itself uh, running in the Node environment. There is so much more to say about how Vite makes Nux possible. I would love, uh, if you're interested, to uh, show off some of uh, the Nux development process. If you want to help out or contribute in any way, please uh, let me know. You can enjoy uh, something of the development uh, experience within the, the framework of Nux itself. Uh, and of course, I hope you are able to enjoy uh, using Nux uh, as a user, something of the speed that Vite makes possible uh, in the development experience, I think, uh, I, I hope you enjoy. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, pl please, uh, I would be really glad of any feedback or um, hearing your experience. If you're interested, check out the docs on v3.nuxjs.org. There's lots to read there. Um, if you want to see a little bit more about how Nuxt works or how you might get started with using Nuxt, you can follow Nuxt uh, on Twitter um, or join our Discord server and uh, ask a question or contribute. Um, and uh, please, as I said, feel free to reach out to me uh, at any point. Um, it's always a pleasure to find out about new people using Nuxt and uh, to see some of what they've built. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Um, I certainly uh, will. 
All the best.